Hey, 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 it's W5HRO. Here's another update on this old Courier 23 to a ham modification, a 10 meter modification. Um, I'm looking at first, I thought I'd go through and I'd do some resistance checks. I had some time. Uh, I have not finished the PAL linear yet. It's uh, I've polished up the case, painted the cabinet. All the parts are out there in the garage on that cleaned up workstation that I set up out there. And I haven't touched it since. It's all just like it was with that per that last video I made of it. I'm just waiting until it's, it's been too hot and it's too hot in the garage to go out there and work on that thing. So when it finally cools down, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna finish that pal amp. But for right now, I had some extra time and I thought I'd, I'd take a look at this uh, Career 23 and just check it all out. First thing that happened is somebody had an angle connector on that, uh, the, uh, the SO239 jack and they must have wrished it all with a pair of pliers back in the early 70s and it hasn't been touched since. And I'm sure the dissimilar metal corrosion had welded them together. So I took a pair of vice grips and I carefully went to turn it and it just snapped the whole thing off. So what I have to do is I have to get a, a small drill bit and drill these rivets out so I can replace this jack, which is not a problem. It's just kind of a pain. It's too bad they had that wrenched on there so tight, but I guess the, you know, the, like I said, the dissimilar metal uh, corro uh, dissimilar metal conduction caused corrosion and it probably just welded it on there because that's what it felt like. I couldn't budge it. So I'll have to be careful. I'll take those parts back first, make sure it doesn't I'll move the wires out of the way. But I'm going to have to drill it through this outside. I've got to drill that out. Then I have to use just a little bit bigger drill bit than what the uh, ribbon hole is to get the head, to get completely through it to get it loose because if you drill through it the th ribbon will just start spinning around in there and you, if you can't get in there and cut it loose you have to just you know use a bigger drill bit i normally just use the next bigger size drill bit right away and get it through and get it out of there but that's not really an issue that solder is going to be a pain but i've got i've got a heat gun that'll get that i can drip i can turn it upside down heat it up i can drip it off of there real easy i can get most all that off not a problem but what I did was I did find the uh, the old Sam's photo fact of this Courier 23. If you look on the web, you won't find this anywhere. This is the old 1965 ECI version. And I was looking through it, thinking this is probably the same one. But no. I mean, it's close, but I'm looking at the mic input. This is where I'm focusing on first. I want to see what it's going to take to get the uh, the mic amp to because I'm going to I'm just probably going to use an amplified D104 with the with the with the uh, stock circuit in it just to just to temporarily get this thing going. Um, but you see, there's the mic, and uh, I've noticed here they've cut out this 4.7 meg, and then this capacitor, and I'm like, does that mean they cut those out, or does that mean they were added? It's, this looked to me like they cut them out and they removed them from the, the circuit. So I'm not sure exactly what this 4.7 meg is in here. But I'm looking at this thing and then the 6E uh, U7 is the issue. I've got to, what I'm going to have to do is when I power this thing up, I'm going to have to put, put a voltmeter. I'm going to have to see exactly what the grid voltage is here and the grid voltage is here on the uh, other one here up here that it goes into. It depends on where those things are. If they're a little bit negative, then that means they can't require it can't handle a lot of grid drive from the uh, from from the audio circuit here. So I, I need to see what they've done because I'm I'm looking at this. The only thing you can find online you can find the uh, the one for the Courier 23 Plus, and I think what it is this is this I know for a fact this is the old this is the old 1965 ECI Courier. This is the original one. Then Phantom took them over and they changed the the, the, fa the display of the face. Like I said, they put a better looking meter in it that's back mounted on the back side of the panel. And they just updated it. They modernized it a little bit. And they put different color. They put black painted metal knobs on here instead of the uh, plain silver ones or the uh, whatever those were. But uh, they uh, but this is the uh, this is the same. They came out with the plus two after this one which we had like a blue color on the face, different colors, blue, green. Then they came out with the Royal, which is like, it has, it's gold and purple. But if I'm looking at this thing, when I started tracing this thing down from the mic jack, I see that .005 capacitor. It looks like they removed from this one because they've gone over it. See, they've shorted over it. Unless they had a relay that was doing that or a switch. This was what doesn't make any sense. 
and the 4.7 meg is also in here. And I'm looking at it, and it's right. It's hard to focus on the camera and try to do this with the. Uh, it's hard to make this video and look at the radio at the same time as what I'm getting at. But the 4.7 meg, where is it? It's right down. See, the cap goes over here. Yeah, the 4.7 meg is right down there. I see it. It's right. I don't know if I can get it with the camera or not. But it's right down in there. If you can see it. Let me see if I can point to it. So, yeah, there it is. Right down there to see that where my finger is. Yellow, purple, green. There it is. So it's connected. But there's a couple things that this doesn't have that the plus schematic doesn't have. So what, it, what, what that tells me is this radio, when it was made, is in between this schematic and this schematic. So I'm going to have to figure out what they've done. But the key thing is, I'm looking at this one, the original one. And there's no diode clipper in here. There's no limiter. The plus has a limiter. This is what I'm what I'm looking at. This is what I'm trying to figure out. See, so it goes in here and then it comes out through the cathode down. It goes for this cap here, which needs to be a lot. That's two. That it needs to be like a point oh one at a minimum, if not a point one. But see what they've done. What this is doing is the DC supply is here, and it's biasing up these diodes. See these diodes, these back-to-back -back diodes like this? They're DC buying them in the middle here with the high voltage from the plate of this other tube through this uh, one meg resistor, then through a 330K for a load. And they're, to bias up the forward bias both these diodes so the signal just goes right through both of them. However, if you limit the voltage here, or the current, what happens is it starts clipping the, the 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 top and bottom of the waveform. It'll square it off like a square wave. And maybe that's why these things used to sound so good. Maybe it was the distortion. Because it looks like on this one that I used to have just like it, it uh I used to drive and it drive it with a, with an amplifier and it probably was clipping at this point. It was just square waves going into this point here. <laughs> so I'm looking whether I need to remove this clipper or not. I need to see where the, I can always change the biasing. If it doesn't, see the problem is if you do that, it could screw up the re, on the, when you're in receive mode. So that's, you can't just bias, re-bias stuff for transmit because it might mess it up on receive. So I have to look at it. But if these are both at zero volts and there's not a problem, I can just put whatever into it and I can remove this clipper. But if it's pulled down below, the, if it's like minus a volt and a half or something, like I think it probably is, that's a problem. So you can't put much drive into those tubes. The voltage swing's got to be tiny. So that's what I need to look at. But they have a, they're hard limiting. This thing's been hard limited. And I've, I've traced it down. And those diodes, one of them's here. One of them is, uh, where's the other one? I saw it. It's on the bottom side. Oh, it's underneath. Where is it? It's, it's right here. It's underneath that resistor. It's there. The first one's there and the second one's there. And, if, and seeing the, the 330K resistors are all there. There's one down there. I mean, they're all, it's, this is the circuit that I have. It's the plus model audio circuit with only like one, one difference. And the difference I saw was, was that this one had, where was it? It had a, uh, a 10K here. And this one, the high V from the B plus line just goes right here. I don't have this 10K resistor in mind. So like I said, this radio is in between this schematic and this schematic. It's so it's a generation in between it. <laughs> so I may have to remove that limiter depending on where the grids are biased. And I could change the biasing down if I have to, but it'd be better if they're both sitting at zero volts exactly. So that's what I have to look at. But I was going through this thing and it dawned on me one of these things I've always wanted to do is I wanted to put together a, uh, you know, a DDS VFO and, and I looked around online and I found, well, all you got to do is buy all the boards. Somebody already wrote the program for it and you just build it just like the diagram shows. It'll work as is. Now, I probably need an amplifier to drive the uh, the crystal jack and, the, the, and this radio to do it right. But the good thing is this one that I found it's actually, it's, it's, it'll do split, receive, and transmit, which is what I'm going to need on this. It's going to have to have split, receive, and transmit frequencies to make it work right. So uh, I can set the one with, uh, for like the RX, 
with the IF frequency program then to shift everything. And then I can do the one for transmit, just for transmit, separately without the IF involved. So you can do, you can do the split, receive, and transmit. There's a line, you, you just ground this line to, make, to put it in a transmit mode to shift it, to undo the, uh, the LO frequency adjustment. So, I mean, I don't mean the LO, I mean the, uh, the, uh, the IF adjustment. So that's good. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find a nice looking little small box about the same size as what I need. And I'll build the built in supply for it. I'll melt, mount all those boards and I'll just remote VFO. The, I mean, I'll just do a DDS VFO on this thing. I think that'll be easier. And that'll make it rock solid on frequency too. The old Courier, I mean, I'm sorry, the old PAL VFOs, those things have regulated supplies and those things are super stable. But a, a DDS is going to be by far more stable, right? So uh, I'm going to probably order the boards for that when I when I after I look at it some more to make sure that's what I want to do for certain, and then I'll uh, or get, find a box and I'll just build something up. I used to have another chrome box that might have matched this courier. I think I left it at my folks' house in Tulsa. It might be in my mom and dad's garage somewhere. I don't know. I could dig around and look, but I had. I had a cabinet that might have worked for the uh, to build the VFO, and it would have made it look similar. Maybe I can find something. Maybe I can search around the flea markets or something and find something that's, or I can have the case chromed on it or something so it all matches. <laughs> that would be slick a a, a a a matching DDS VFO that's in a, a cabinet that looks like the Couriers with the chrome and everything and the same type of face, brush type loom and whatever this is. Oh, one more thing. I uh, I, ha I have some. Uh, what do you call uh, not WD forty, but the uh, the liquid, the uh, oh, the stuff you loosen up the screws and stuff with. I've, I've it's soaking in there. I'm unable to get these set screws out. Mainly what what it is. This one somehow in its age, maybe it got banged at some point. It's been pushed up against the nut, and I think the shaft inside the pot is somewhat frozen. And you can it, you can turn it, but you got to take one of those. Uh, like one of those things you take, you open lids off jars with and those rubber things to get this thing to turn. I can turn it, but I've, I've got some oil on it. I have, what I put on this thing is I put penetrating oil. I put a few drops and it's been soaking for a couple of days. I'm going to add a little bit more. But what I determined is these Allen nuts in here are in between the standard sizes. They're in between 164th and 116th. So it has to either be a, uh, 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 what is it? It has to be a, uh, it has to be a 132nd or it's, no, wait, what, what did I say it was? Yeah, it's either a 132nd or a 364 And those are odd, oddball size Allen. So I got on eBay and I found some of those old military surplus packets that they made for the military, like for Collins radios and whatever other stuff they had. I found some of those on eBay, like a pack of three of each. So I found this both sizes I needed because it's one of those sizes. I think it's, uh, I think it's 364 is what it is, but it's kind of amazing because I tried to put one in and it kept stripping out. I'm hoping I didn't strip them out. This one, it did just a little bit. And I think it'll still work if I, when I put the right size L in there, I think it's okay. I shined a light in it, but that hopefully that penetrating oil will loosen up because these things were put on back in what the late 60s and it's been sitting there ever since so it's i'm sure that it's corroded and it's stuck so uh hopefully i think that 364 is the right size to get these loose but if not it's the 132nd and i'm surprised that a a a, a, a radio manufacturer back in the, the 50s and 60s would put uh you know the uh the uh that size allen with nuts with that size allens uh, once uh, 130 seconds or 364 you got to be kidding me so they had a special tool there when they were assembling these things on the production line they had the special size to get those get the knobs on that's crazy you wouldn't think they'd use those oddball sizes they they would have used standard you know american sizes the big sizes the ordinary you know the standard standard sizes you know but they didn't they went off key on this so uh off key or off off tilt that is <laughs> so anyway i'm like i said i'm going to do all the resistance checks and these electrolytics i'm going to change out right away this radio doesn't it doesn't appear to have been used very much so these you know what these caps are probably they'd probably fire up and it probably worked for a little while just like they are 
I really don't want to do that though. I'm going to resistance check all this stuff and change all the electrolytics and these other ones are probably okay for now and see what happens and then plug this thing up and see I did I did ohm across the fuse and it rings out it's a, it's 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 fine it's not not open so that's a good sign it didn't have the power cord the one thing that bugged me was the guy didn't have the power cord he says it was his dad's so I'm, I'm assuming it just got pulled off and got lost or separated which is no biggie because it looks like that the fuse isn't blown so that's a good thing because you know if you think if something was wrong that fuse would have blown right and it didn't so Hopefully it's all and everything's okay. The transformer didn't get smoked or anything, but uh, we'll find out. But I just want to kind of give you an uh, update on this and kind of show you what I'm looking at because I've got to modify this audio circuit. I, I definitely have to modify it. And uh, do I need to remove the clipper? I'll probably bypass it first to see. But I'm going to check to see what the it all depends on what the grid voltage is. At the grid, each, each, that that six EU seven is a is a twin is a twin trio, so it's one tube. So I need to check the voltage at each of those grids and see where it is. Maybe if I could shift them both to zero and it would still work on receive, then it would work. It may, they may both be at zero because I was looking at this old courier schematic, and it kind of looks like it is. Maybe they were afraid that people were overdriving these things and they were, the mics were too hot and they were going to get too much you know, drive into that tube. I don't know, but I'm going to look at that and I'm going to remove that clipper if possible. So that's it for now. This is W5HR and an O. One last uh, bit of added info I forgot to mention is that uh, I didn't describe this circuit enough with what they're doing on this clipping. Like I said, they, uh, they're they uh, going, they're using the high voltage, the 200 some odd volts for that one meg resistor to the 330K. And into there the Ford Biosol's diodes both directions and what they're doing is see the audio modulation adjust pop to you know that's how you adjust the percentage of audio it uh, what it does is when you rise the pot up it's just shorting this to ground which is basically clipping the this thing is like hard starts to hard clip so when it's Ford biased all the way they're on when you start reducing the voltage here they start in the current they start turning off and see the 33 the 330k resistors on each side of these uh diodes are uh are the uh, the load and that's why they have one here and see when this thing you rise it up to kill it that reduce the audio it shorts this to ground when it gets all the way to the top basically that's why they use the one meg resistor here to be positive because it's basically shorting this to ground and it was going to kill that output right so they had to use a big resistor which is the other reason why they put this electrolytic cap here because it probably fluctuates like heck when you start shorting this thing to ground this this point here this is a bad idea that's why this is the section i am going to change and the trick would be to get this second half of this 6eu7 on transmit the grid at zero volts then it won't matter i can drive the piss out of it and that that would solve the problem but they've limited this thing like they do all like they did all the other cbs on down the road and uh you know that that's that that's an issue this is that's not going to work like that it'll work but it's going to hard clip it it's you're going to have square waves going into that tube and i don't want square waves going into it plus it's going to mess up the load on the high v which is why they have that big cap going to ground so I just wanted to point that out because I, 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 it dawned on me. I forgot to uh, mention that before I uh, stopped the other video. So I'm going to combine this one to this uh, the other one. That's all for now. This is W5HRO.